Uh, Brandon is a brand strategist at 10 Adams, and he was also uh, involved with something that you guys uh, might have heard of called E is for Everyone, um, and helps us do that. And uh, we're excited for him to come and share um, just a little bit of his uh, experience moving into Evansville and being part of creating a community that really is for everyone. So if you guys would, welcome Brandon Scott. All right. So five months ago, this was launched. Quick show of hands, who has heard of this? A lot, awesome. This is a formal way of communicating a movement that's been building here for a very, very long time. A movement that represents who we are, what we do, and where we are here in Evansville. Another quick show of hands, who actually knows why this is so important to everybody? A little bit less, right? There's that gap. You know, for me, a passion of mine has been building strong, uh, inspirational brands, you know, brands that resonate with people, products, organizations that really, really talk and resonate with people's heartstrings. What I've learned over this time is that the best brands are built from the inside out. It starts internal and then it goes external. Not a marginal representation of the internal, it actually talks to every single person individually. The challenge is that tensions exist, personal tensions actually exist, whether we recognize those or not, but then it slaps you in the face like reality when real problems show up on your face. And you can't avoid the conversations that are happening in the news cycle and the social media comments that are coming and filtering up your feeds. When you decide to turn left and then you open your eyes and you really see what reality looks like. We may have become numb to all of this disruption that's happening and going on in our daily life, but we're not immune to it. We're human. And being human in this society, we understand that, div that division lives at multiple levels in groups that are dominated by politics, by prejudice, by racism, by religion, by sexism. Arguments and fights are happening every single day. Lives are being lost every single day. And on a personal level, division exists with selfish, uh, selfishness and self-intentions. You'll see social media personalities and reality stars, uh, re reality TV stars, that expose a look at me infatuation. You know, so at this point, we all are aware of this, and none of us, you know, many of us have fallen victim to it. So at this point in life, we have to ask ourselves the question, is Evansville for everyone. Some say yes, some say no way. Some even say this, E is for exclusion. And the reality is every single person is right. Whether you've got a positive or a negative or a neutral sentiment towards this city, your feelings are valid. That's why this is not a solution, it's a movement powered by like-minded neighbors who have decided to say, we want something better and we're gonna build it. This brand is aspirational because it's for everyone. The intention is to really engage people where they are, go to them and offer an opportunity to cultivate relationships. The big goal at the end of the day is this, is change. We're trying to change the perception and the reputation of this city that we love. You know, some say change is tough, but do we embrace it? 10 years ago in 2007, you know, we used to never tell anybody that we love to go and get into a car with strangers. And now in 2017, pull out Uber, hit up our phone and summon strangers to come and get into their car with them. 20 years ago in 1997, we used to let our kids play with each other just because they liked them. And today, we don't even let our kids play with each other if so-and-so's parent is a Republican or so-and-so's parent is a Democrat. You know, I talk about change, and I stand here before you as a man born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, who attended college in Richmond, Virginia, who lived and worked in Atlanta, Georgia, and now I proudly wear an Evansville, Indiana lapel pin above my heart. It's an honor. But tonight, let's strip all that back. And let's talk about some personal things. I often get asked the question, Brandon, how do you handle the tensions? What's really in your heart? What do you feel? And for me, 
I'll be honest, and I'll address four very real tensions that I felt. Guilt. It's that feeling that I owe someone something. I've made a mistake or I've wronged somebody. And I've recognized and I've learned that when I'm feeling this, I need to confess. I need to say I'm sorry. I need to say thank you and, be, and show gratitude. Anger. The feeling that somebody owes me something, right? That feeling that they, I was wronged, you know, based on my expectations or of what was right and what is just and what is fair. And when I'm feeling that, I've learned to forgive, to let go of the grudge so the grudge can finally let go of me. Greed, that feeling that I've earned it. And I know and I feel for you, and I know you've got something going on, but my time and my money is a little more precious, and I need to hold on to it. When I'm feeling those things, I've learned to give. To give without expectation of anything in return. And then jealousy. That feeling that life owes me. I've done everything right. I've checked all the boxes. But somehow, somebody else has got what I want. It's that hater mentality. And when I'm starting to feel that jealousy, I've learned... to celebrate. And celebration is tough, but you need to begin to celebrate exactly the fact that I am so thankful and so blessed to have incredible friends and family and to stop comparing and start recognizing that I can be happy and celebrate somebody else's accomplishment and acknowledge it as well. So when we take a look in a mirror at ourselves and we see these items, these tensions, these realities, do they live in our heart internally? And then we can, if we can address that, then we can begin to be honest about building a relationship and building a community based on building relationships. And it starts with a simple call to action. Connect, contribute, and celebrate. Connect, we're finding opportunities to get connected and forge new relationships. Revisiting old friends, making friends with new people that we've never talked to. It's the opportunity to either hit the reset button or to reset the narrative and break the ice. Contribute. And that's doing something you care about and getting your hands dirty. If you are unsure, please speak up and ask. Somebody will be there to support you. You will have a mentor to help you through anything. And I promise you by, you will get results by simply contributing to the bigger picture. And when you do all of those two things, each of those two things, you have the opportunity to celebrate. You can celebrate what you've helped people to accomplish. Celebrate an environment where everyone feels involved. Not because they're entitled to it, but simply because they they have offered something that's positive for the betterment of the community. And we can celebrate that we have been able to contribute without, without any expectation of anything in return. That's the single most powerful thing that we are actually entitled to do. And by doing that with consistency, we will be far more successful than we ever were before. So do you believe that inclusivity is valuable to the betterment of our community? And if you answer yes, then ask yourself this question. What will I do to build our community? Building a community looks like Katrina. It looks like Harvey. It looks like the aftermath of a tragedy when uh, that's just far beyond our control. It's when all the divisive elements in our world somehow wash away and humanity gets a chance to shine through. If we are going to heal a divided nation, that takes laughter. And laughing together takes compassion and commonality and relativity and empathy. And it opens the door for love. And when you learn to lean in with your heart and not expect anything else in return, Somehow it always decides to come back to you tenfold. And if I look at this room right now, I'm seeing the change makers. And you know that this is a very dirty and a thankless process. But you decided to be here tonight because you believed that your time was best spent being here with us tonight and talking about this and having this conversation. You also believe that your time spent after tonight will have a dramatic impact on the lives of others. So as you think about this question, you consider it, what will I do to build our community? I encourage you to find somebody else 
tonight and tomorrow and the next day and begin to ask them this question. Let's do it.